decided to go with a bit of a different format today and actually I'm gonna pull this up real quick so you guys can see my face. So I decided to go with a bit of a different format today and yeah I decided to uh, stand up and do my review because well currently nobody's home so I'm free and able to uh, do what I need to do. By the way guys By the way, guys, Monday Night Raw was complete utter trash. Wasn't it summer? Wasn't it summer? Raw was really bad today, wasn't it? Yes, it was. It was really, tr it was really bad. It was incredibly bad today. I mean, I don't understand how the hell you can go from delivering an actual decent show last week. Last week was, was actually pretty decent. But, and all of a sudden they go back to the same old direction that they have always have been. I mean, wouldn't you want to continue to ride the momentum that you, that you guys finally gained? But no, they didn't do that. So... They decided to take the boring routes and go with the same old, same old. Didn't they, Summer? Yes. The show started off with a mixed tag team match of Seth Rollins and Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch taking on Andrade and Zelina Vega. And apparently this mixed tag team match was elimination rule. Now, please explain to me the rules of a mixed tag team match and elimination rules. I mean, how does that even work? As far as I know, what happened? Becky Lynch tapped out Zelina Vega. And then when they came back to commercial break, they said now it's a one-on-one -on -one match. Because Becky Lynch eliminated Selena Vegas. So now it's just Seth Rollins versus Andrade. And I, I'm sorry. That's not good enough. I mean, you mean to tell me that a match that's supposed to be called a mixed tag team elimination match. So you mean to tell me from those rules alone. From those rules alone that they just told us. You mean to tell me. That if Andrade pinned Seth Rollins, Andrade and Zelina Vega would have won. Cat, stop bugging me. Sorry, I bet she, she's hungry. Anyway, I'm gonna sit down now. Anyway, I'm gonna. Anyway, I'm gonna sit down now. But you mean to tell me? But you mean to tell me that's how you're gonna do it? If Andrade beats Seth Rollins. If Andrade beats Seth Rollins, you mean to tell me that we'll be saying you be you they'll be saying here is your winner, Andrade and Zelina Vega? Becky Lynch. Like, WWE had no problems with having Becky Lynch fighting with Mike Canellis. Right? They had no problems getting her in there to, to fight Mike Canellis. And then all of a sudden, now she's not allowed to fight fight males? Come on, really? I mean, really? I didn't get this mixed tag team match. I really didn't get it. It was unnecessary to add the mix, the elimination rule. To me, it was unnecessary to add the elimination rule. And can someone tell me why Baron Corbin and Lacey Evans hadn't had a mixed tag team match yet? Because they're, they're building it up as is Seth Rollins... And Becky Lynch are having a warm-up or a tune-up, whatever you want to call it. Like, they're saying that they're having a warm-up match. Getting, preparing themselves for, um, preparing themselves for, um, what's called? What, 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 what do you call it? Preparing themselves for Extreme Rules. They call it a warm-up. Getting ready for Extreme Rules. So you mean to tell me 
that Baron Corbin and Lacey Evans don't have a warm-up match. They don't have a tune-up match. Only Becky Lynch and Seth Rollins do. Seth and Becky last week took on Mike and Maria. That was perfect. That was a perfect enough of an opponent for them. This week, it should have been Baron Corbin and Lacey Evans' turn. So I don't get why Baron Corbin and Lacey Evans didn't have a mixed tag team tune up. And besides, their, their characters are all like they're against relationships. They don't like relationships. So you mean to tell me you couldn't put them in the ring with a Rusev and Lana? Or even, or even Naomi and Jimmy Uso? I don't get it. I really don't get it. So the next match we had was The Miz and The Usos versus The Revival and then Elias in a, what do you know, another two out of three falls match. Listen, I understand they have a new rule. I understand they have a new rule that said that's called no wrestling during commercial break. But do we really need two out of three falls matches and elimination matches just to get to commercial break? Do you want to know how you fix this problem? You just let the wrestlers wrestle, and then when their matches are over, then you go to commercial break. It's not that difficult. It's not that difficult. But WWE is making it look like it's so difficult that you have to do it their way. It's, it's not necessary. Speaking of not necessary, the Revival had to take two unnecessary losses here. The Revival get the first victory. They pin the Usos. The Miz scares off Elias. So Elias runs away. He doesn't come back. So this leaves the, leaves the Revival all on their own to suffer two pinfalls. At first I was like, okay. I was thinking, okay, this is good. They can use Elias to be the one that gets pinned to protect the Revival. But no, nope. Elias runs away and the Revival take two pinfalls. And here's the funny thing that I find funny. I didn't mention this on my SmackDown review last week. But Byron Saxton, during Bailey's match with Nikki Cross, I believe. Yeah, they verse each other all the time, so I can't... Sorry, I guess I shouldn't forget. But, but here's the thing, right? Byron Saxton actually legitimately said that one of the rules in WWE is that you have to pin the champion in order to get a title shot. Nikki Cross pinned Bailey, so Alexa Bliss shouldn't really be having the title shot. So, well, there you go. They just explained it to us that that, that is one of the rules. Are you kidding me? It's one of the rules? So, so you tell me if I was to go to the WWE, and they said to me, if you are a champion, you have to lose because it's part of the rules. Or they have, like, the rule, or they, like, have the rules all, all on a big giant wall. Here are the rules. You are a champion, you have to lose. That just sounds really silly if you ask me. That sounds really silly. Next we had the return of Rey Mysterio. Welcome back, Rey Mysterio. And he and he issued an open challenge. And the person that accepted his open challenge was none other than the almighty Bobby Lashley. And Bobby Lashley beats Rey Mysterio in 45 seconds. Well, what a way to come back, huh? Now, don't get me wrong. I don't have a problem with Rey Mysterio putting over other people. I don't. And in my honest opinion, I know a lot of people hate Bobby Lashley, but I feel like they did this for a good reason. And they announced that Braun Strowman and Bobby Lashley are going to have a last man standing match. So, it kind of makes sense. Maybe not for Ray to lose in 45 seconds, but 
But it makes sense for Bobby Lashley to win. At the end of the day, it makes sense for Bobby Lashley to win. That's about it. That's all i got to say about that. So I didn't really see much wrong with that at all. Next we had Cesaro, who still does the bar hand gesture. I, 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 I don't have a problem with that, mate. I don't have a problem with that. But anyway, Cesaro took on No Way Jose in a very, in a very boring match. Look. I love Cesaro. I think Cesaro is definitely future Universal Champion. He is. Or even WWE Champion. But please. Please. Can you guys, can you at least give him some decent competition? No way, Jose. I guess No Way Jose really isn't competition. But come on. If you're doing this to build up Cesaro to a potential title title run in the future, then I'd be fine with it. But at the end of the day, this win does nothing for Mr. Cesaro. So Cesaro wins. He makes uh, No Way Jose tap out to the sharpshooter. Next, we had the Viking Raiders taking on two jobbers by the name of Colin Justin and Devin Justin. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like jobber matches. And the Vi- and obviously the Viking Raiders won. So the, so with the Viking experience. So you know, I'm kind of used to that name as the finisher now, the Viking experience, but you know, still a bad name. But either way, uh Ricochet took on Luke Gallows in Luke Gallows. Now here's now I got now now here's something I gotta say. It's great that the club is back together, but wouldn't have it killed WWE to at least have AJ Styles explain why he's reformed the club? You expect us to be all like, oh well, he's reformed the club. We all should be happy. He needs to give out specific reasons why. We feel like he needs to give out reasons why he's reformed the club. You can't just say, oh, the club's back together. That's it. Like, sure, fans are happy. And the fact that Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson re-signed for five years with WWE, as well as The Revival and Mike and Maria, they all signed five-year contracts. Still no word on Sasha if she's going to come back or not. But here's the thing, right? Does anyone really care? Because at the end of the day, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows, importantly, he lost to Ricochet. Now, on my Twitter, I said I really didn't have much of a problem with Gallows losing because Gallows was dominating the entire match. And Ricochet getting a surprise win on him is, is actually pretty good. But at the end of the day, I will say, having the club lose already is not a smart decision. Now, I'm not saying Ricochet should have been losing to Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson as well. I agree, Ricochet shouldn't be losing. But at the end of the day, you're making the club look like a a non-threat. Especially since you had them attack Ricochet after their matches. So it doesn't make the so it doesn't make the club look any good. Just my honest opinion on that. Then we had this then we had this really silly beat the clock match with Bailey and Nikki Cross. Same old garbage. Same old garbage. Like, seriously, if there's one thing I'm getting so sick of, it's the same old garbage with Alexa Bliss. She's using you. Blah, blah, blah. She's using you to do this. She's using you to do that. I mean, seriously, can, I mean, seriously, can this stop? Can this stop? Seriously? It's the same old garbage. You're rehashing the same thing. 
We get it. Alexa Bliss is a heel. But do I have to repeat myself? Mickey James turned on Alexa Bliss. Alexa Bliss never used Mickey James. It was Nia that turned Nia turned on Alexa as well. How many times do I have to repeat myself? Seriously, se se seriously. WWE are trying to make Alexa Bliss look like this big bad guy. I would love to see Alexa Bliss become a babyface. What I would do is that it, it, now I now I've got two things I could do. There's two things I would do. It's either a Sasha Banks returns, which is which is what I think is going to happen. Sasha Banks is going to return to aid Bailey to beat Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross in this two-on-one handicap situation. And b if Sasha Banks does not return, this is my second scenario. Have Nikki Cross turn on Alexa. Have Nikki Cross snap and turn heel on Alexa. So you can turn Alexa babyface. I think it's time for Alexa Bliss to be a babyface. These two scenarios I'm perfectly fine with WWE going with. Either Sasha, either Sasha returns, or they have Nikki Cross turn turn on Alexa, and Alexa becomes a babyface. So at the end of the day, so 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 at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. But Bailey, ba Bailey versus Sarah Logan in a very boring match. People started chanting CM Punk. I mean, seriously, can can people let this go? Seriously, can they grow up? I don't give a shit about Punk anymore. He's quit. He's gone. Get over it. Seriously, I'm so sick and tired of it. Honestly. So sick and tired of this bullcrap, man. With, with CM Punk. Fans are chanting boring. And of course, people like to say, oh, well, people, they, they can chant whatever the hell they want. Well, but, yeah, they can chant whatever the hell they want, but they've been doing this for how long? It's the same old shit. Same old shit. It's almost as annoying as the what chance. Please, enough. So Bailey beat beat uh, Bailey beats Sarah Logan, and then Nikki Cross beat Dana Brooke. Basically, the jobbers of Monday Night Raw, and then Nikki Cross announced that she's gonna have that 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 Bailey will be in a handicap match. Wow. And you could, could you have thought of anything any less extreme? Could you have thought of anything extreme? A handicap match. How extreme! Seriously, I would have accepted a bra and panties match between Bailey and Alexa Bliss. That sounds more extreme than a handicap match. You could make it a tables match. A ladder match? A chairs match? A stairs match? Concretes match? Anything. Backstage brawl? Falls count anywhere? Anything. You could have thought of anything better. But you give us a handicap match. So like I said, two things are going to happen. Either Sasha Banks is going to return at Extreme Rules, or they have Alexa Bl or they have Nikki Cross finally snap and turn on Alexa, and this causes Alexa Bliss to turn face, and Nikki Cross is all is all like I I, I gave her everything, and she blew every opportunity I gave her. You know, 
So, then you can have Alexa Bliss turn face that way. So, there's two scenarios they can do here. But we'll just have to wait and see what they are going to do. And also throughout the show, also throughout the show, um, Shane McMahon was looking for a partner for Roman Reigns, trying to pick a partner for him, and it was stupid. This whole, this whole thing was really, really dumb. So, so who did so who did Shane McMahon end up picking? There was a guy named Gary backstage who was a janitor, and and Shane McMahon picked Gary. Promised him five thousand dollars if he was to stand in the corner and be Roman's partner. So when the match took place, Roman Reigns accidentally tagged in Gary the Goat Garbutt Garbutt and then Gary was defenseless and then all of a sudden Gary does a big kick to the head leaps off the ropes does a clothesline to Shane McMahon does a suicide dive to take out Drew McIntyre and as soon as as soon as this guy started wrestling I had a feeling this wasn't really this guy because cause, cause we all know this guy isn't physically a wrestler. So then, so, so Drew McIntyre delivers the Claymore kick and he pins, and, 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 and Shane McMahon pins Gary, the GOAT. And then, and then Roman Reigns took the mask off and it was revealed to be Cedric Alexander. Cedric Alexander in the main event of Monday Night Raw. Now, I've got no issues with that. I've got no issues with that at all. But at the end of the day, man... At the end of the day, man, the show is really bad, and uh, seriously. And also, one more thing before I go, and this is definitely a one big thing I want to note to everybody at the end. Before everybody starts typing in Paul Heyman and Eric Bischoff's names on their titles, and they start blaming them, and they start attacking them, and, and for saying that they're putting on a crappy show, it was just, there was a report that came out stating that Paul Heyman and Eric Bischoff are not starting their positions as the exclusive directors for Raw and SmackDown, not until after Extreme Rules. So there you go. So you guys can't start blaming them. People can't blame Paul Heyman and Eric Bischoff. So, back, so, so... So, so better luck next time, clown. Better, better, better luck, better luck next time, guys. But anyway, guys, those are my thoughts and opinions on Monday Night Raw. Really trashy show. Re 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 really trashy show. And yeah, to me, it really, to me, this show really needs to really step up its game. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Hit that thumbs up. Comment your thoughts down below. And I'll see you all next time when I do my SmackDown review. See you guys later.